So as I watched my Colts blow it yesterday to the Jaguars, I noticed that the Jags have a player who is truly one of the best stories in the NFL so far. Meet rookie running back James Robinson. The guy went from FCS football at Illinois State to an undrafted free agent and he is now the starter for the Jacksonville Jaguars. With his start yesterday, he became the first undrafted rookie running back to start a game in 30 seasons, which is just unbelievable. Today we will talk about his amazing story and how he got to this point. But first, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new, hit that like button, drop a future video suggestion, and also don't forget to turn on post notifications so you never miss another upload. Now let's get started with the rise of James Robinson. Not many guys make it from the FCS level to the NFL to begin with, yet alone a starter. But if you know James's story, then his recent success will not surprise you one bit. James is known for being a quiet, down-to-earth guy who's just there to handle his business, and that comes from his roots back in Illinois. More specifically, James grew up in the northern Illinois city of Rockford, Illinois, and he loved football from a very young age. Not a lot is known about his football story, but at 5'9", he was a tad bit undersized for the running back position. But what he lacked in height, he made up for with heart. He became a beast at Rockford High School, but he wasn't recruited heavily. He would eventually receive offers from multiple FCS programs, and he would later commit to Illinois State. The Redbirds are one of the better FCS football programs, and he was going to be able to stay home and build his legacy in state. As a freshman there, he was one of the backup running backs for the team, and he only appeared in nine games due to a calf injury. He would go on to rush for 322 yards and two touchdowns as a freshman, though, and he had a bright future on the roster. As a sophomore, he became the team's starting running back, and he blossomed into a young star. He became a first-team Missouri Valley Conference selection after he rushed for 933 yards and 12 touchdowns. As a junior, James became one of the best running backs in FCS football as he ran for 1,290 yards and 12 touchdowns once again, and he was also named a first-team FCS All-American. Going into his senior season, he was one of the better running backs in all of college football, and he was actually looked at as a fringe NFL draft prospect. He had a ton of hype, but in order to actually become a real prospect, he's going to have to have a monster year. He 100% lived up to that hype as he rushed the ball for 1,899 yards and a crazy 18 touchdowns, and he was a consensus first-team All-American once again. He finished his Illinois State career with 4,444 yards, which is second in program history. He definitely delivered when it came to on-field production, but was it going to be enough to get him to the NFL? In mid-January, he was named to the roster for the Shrine Bowl, and this would be his first chance to show scouts that he belonged. Against Power 5 players, Robinson rushed for 135 yards on just 8 carries, and if you do math real quick, that's almost 17 yards per carry. This is crazy, because not only did he impress scouts, but he looked like the best running back on the field. He said he knew he was capable of this all along, he just had to show the world he could do it. He was the kind of guy who instantly handed the ball to the ref, and just carried himself very humbly off the field. Flash forward a few weeks, James Robinson got a chance to prove himself again, this time at the NFL Combine. He had one of the best days of any other back at the Combine, but his 40 yard dash time wasn't anything special, which may have ultimately costed him. He was projected to be selected anywhere between the 5th and the 7th round in the 2020 NFL Draft, but teams saw James for his weaknesses instead of his strengths. Instead of seeing James as someone who put up yards in college, had a chip on his shoulder, and would help the team in the locker room, they saw a guy who played at a lower level, was somewhat undersized, and wasn't fast enough to succeed to their standards. I bet this absolutely crushed James, but knowing who he was, he was going to prove people wrong and make the league. This is what he had to say about going undrafted. Obviously, when I didn't get drafted, it was sad for all of us, Robinson said. I think for me, it was just more of trying to do something to help out my family and show I wasn't going to let not getting drafted bring me down. Luckily for him, Jay Gruden and the Jacksonville Jaguars saw potential in him and decided to offer him a spot in form of an undrafted free agent contract. He took that and he was ready to get to work. In what will go down as the weirdest offseason ever due to COVID-19, James continued to work and get better and he was ready to make a name for himself at camp. He apparently showed a ton of potential to the team, and the coaching staff raved about him. And it wasn't only the coaches. Quarterback Gardner Minshew became a big proponent of James, and he had this to say about him. He's kind of a quiet guy, but man, he's a great guy. He's gained all the respect of the older guys because he came in, knew his stuff, took the responsibility that he had, and proved that he deserved it. The other players were impressed by his skills, but more so about how he carried himself. Despite being a rookie from a small school, he looked like a pro as he worked hard, didn't say much, and embraced every drill. Little did he know how much of that hard work would pay off for him. Head coach Doug Marone had this to say about him. You watch the way someone goes about their business, and James is all football. 
He's really a man of few words, doesn't really say much, but he really picked things up quickly, really had a good feel. In order for him to become the starter, three dominoes would have to fall, and domino number one was Leonard Fournette. Fournette was one of the best backs in the NFL, but his injury issues and disagreements with the organization led to his eventual dismissal from the team. Domino number two was Ryquell Armstead. Ryquell was a talented running back from Temple who was taken by the Jags in the fifth round last year, but due to COVID-19, he was placed on injured reserve. The final domino was in second year running back Devin Ogzigbo. Ogzigbo was a former star running back from Nebraska, and he was signed to the Jags as an undrafted free agent in 2019. He remained on the roster and was set to be the starter until three days before their season opener against the Colts. He got injured and was placed on IR too, and now James Robinson was not only going to make the roster, but he was going to be the week one starter. He had gone to become the first undrafted rookie running back in 30 years to start a season opener, but that wouldn't be the only record he could break. After becoming the fourth guy ever to become the starter, he went on to impress in the Jags opener. He would need 45 yards to set the NFL record, and by the time halftime had rolled around, he already had 61. James would go on to make some big plays in the second half, including a big hurdle play, and he helped lead the Jags to an upset win over the Indianapolis Colts. The 5'8 underdog carried the ball 16 times for 62 yards and also cut a pass for 28 yards. His story is truly unbelievable, and out of all the storylines from week 1 of the NFL season, I found this one to be the best. I will be rooting for Robinson hardcore this season, and if anyone deserves success, it's him. He is the first of many underdog stories from this season, and if you want to hear more stories like his, then be sure to hit that subscribe button, as I will be bringing you guys the best stories from each week of the NFL season. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to smash that like button and let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. If you are a Jags fan, let me know what you think of them and give me a suggestion for a future video topic. Before you leave, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and check out all my other NFL player videos. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.